From the campus studios of Saarland University, this is Ropecast, a lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Hello and welcome to another episode of Ropecast. I'm Peter Tischer and next to me is Roger Charlton. Hi, Roger. Hello, Peter. The other day we were talking about dictionaries, remember? Yes. The monolingual dictionaries for advanced learners. Yes. And just at the end of the podcast, you said that you could buy a few of those dictionaries, or maybe all of them, with an additional CD-ROM. Yes. Which will, of course, cost a little bit more, like, I don't know, five, five euros more. Yeah. Why should people invest these five or ten euros more to buy one with a CD-ROM? Well, it has huge advantages, Peter. For example, pronunciation. If you just buy the book, okay, you have this you know, international phonetic alphabet to tell you how to pronounce the word. Right. But surely it's much better to listen to a native speaker pronouncing it. Is there only the British pronunciation on that, since oh, they're no. all British publishers? No, no, you get the American. You can switch between British and American. Ah, so you get one of those little loudspeakers. Exactly. And one yeah. with an American flag and one with a British, I guess. It's, it's kind of interesting to listen uh -huh. to one after the other, you know, right after the other and compare the pronunciations. Okay, but what else is there on the, on the dictionary? Or what, what, what other advantages are there on the CD-ROM? Here we really get to see the differences between the different publishing houses, what they decide to give you as an additional kind of feature on the CD-ROM. For example, the Longman Publishing House really concentrates on near synonyms of words. So you, okay. click, you click on a word, and then you can click on just a button there and get a, a whole bunch of near synonyms of that word, words in the same field. So this is good if you're writing a paper and right. you don't want to use the same word every time and or you're maybe, looking for something similar. Or maybe you're not quite sure which is the best word anyway. Ah, okay, yeah, you're, right. You're, you're not quite sure whether there are stylistic differences between words or some other kind of difference. Okay. What about other specialties of other CD-ROMs? Yeah, Oxford, I'd like to mention particularly cultural information because the CD-ROM, in effect, contains not only the Oxford Advanced Learner's Dictionary but also another book about British and American culture. So there's a huge amount of encyclopedic information about the USA and the UK on the CD-ROM. So this is maybe the dictionary you want to buy if you're planning on a stay in either the US or in Great Britain, if you want to prepare a little bit. Or maybe as a teacher or future teacher of uh, the language. Well, that's true, yeah, yeah. And then Macmillan is perhaps a little less America-oriented, but it's very, uh -huh. very good on collocation. So how British collocation, that <laughs> well, is. <perhaps>. <laughs> <laughs> so this wouldn't be the one for me, I guess. <laughs> But you know, people... things like, you know, which word do you use with which? Okay. Uh, it's not enough to know the words, but they have to be put together. And that involves not only grammar, but other things. Could you give an example for that? Well, yeah, we're in Germany. Right. I'm sure you're aware, Peter, that German learners tend to say, I have made the experience that... Yes, whatever. this is yeah? quite common. And this is understandable, mm -hmm. but no native speaker would say that. Yes. We don't use make with experience. Right, We right. might say, I had an experience, or in mm. my experience, it's like this. So, in my experience, or I had an experience, especially I had an experience, is a collocation for the word experience. Exactly. Okay, yeah. okay. Another thing to look out for on the CD-ROMs is practice material, exercises. Oh, there are exercises on the... Many of these contain exercises, right. so you can practice your vocabulary, you can practice... Right. I, I saw that on the one that I brought in last time. Uh, I, I, I took that one along, the Cambridge Advanced Learner's Dictionary. It does have exercises yes. uh, on it and some additional functions. And one thing that I liked about the Cambridge, which wasn't the case always in the past, is that it works with a Mac, with a Macintosh oh, computer. Oh, right. Yes. Uh, I don't know. Do the others work with a Macintosh oh, I think you'll computer find nowadays? All the big publishers are aware that there are many, many Mac users around the world. Okay, yeah. okay. So, so that's settled then. But the Cambridge is probably the most international, and that's important for some people. Ah, okay. Maybe you're interested in Australian English. Right. Then the Cambridge is probably the one for you. Mm -hmm. Actually, I like the whole thing. I like the Cambridge yeah. pretty much, which is, of course, folks, not an endorsement <laughs> for Cambridge over another. You still have to decide for your own 
dear listeners, uh, what you want to buy. This is what we're trying to tell you here. But I must admit, I like it pretty much. Uh, the only thing that got to me is that although it works with a Mac, it does not have every function that it would have on a PC. Maybe people should watch out for that. Yeah. The, the final point I'd like to make is if you're interested in the origins of words, what right. we call etymology, right. then Oxford is the one for you. Okay, okay. But this is really only for people interested in the linguistic side of it. Where does a word come from yes. historically and maybe borrowed from another language? Yeah. Okay. Well, folks, I hope this has given you some information about how to buy a dictionary and which ones are the ones that you should have a closer look at. Now it's up to you. Go to your bookstore, maybe have a look at one of your online booksellers and uh, check out their websites. But for today, we're calling it a day, and we're going to study our dictionaries and learn a few more words for the next Ropecast. Bye. Bye. You've been listening to Ropecast, brought to you by Saarland University, featuring Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial. <laughs>